FRS and GMRS radios are by far the two most common types of consumer radios in the USA. In this video, we'll directly compare the transmit range of FRS versus GMRS radios and go over some key factors that will help you estimate the range that your radio can get in a given situation. We're gonna flood them down to you, okay? Roger, roger, 10-4 over now. There are many technical factors that can impact your range, but the two most important factors for you to consider are the transmission power of your radio and the terrain that you are in. For license-free FRS radios, like our mountain radio, the maximum transmission power allowed by the FCC is two watts. GMRS radios, like our five watt radio, can output up to five watts of power for a handheld device. We'll use these two Rocky Talky radios to illustrate the difference in FRS versus GMRS range. The second major factor that impacts range is the type of terrain that you're in. Obstacles between you and your partner will affect your ability to communicate. Let's break down the types of environments you might encounter into three categories. Line of sight, minor obstructions, and major obstructions. For line of sight situations, the radio waves are able to travel unimpeded for long distances. We went to Lake Tahoe with a clear view across the lake from one peak to another, right around 35 miles apart. Hey, Justin, this is Alex calling from Echo Lake. Do you copy? Do you copy? Hey, Alex, this is Justin um, off TRT above Tahoe Meadows. I read you loud and clear. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to switch over. I'm going to try you on the mountain radio now. Hey, Justin, this is Alex from South Lake. This is me on the mountain radio. Do you copy? I do copy. I can hear every word. As you can see, if you maintain line of sight, range will not be an issue, regardless of whether it's an FRS or a GMRS radio. This is, of course, the best case scenario for radio range. In general, radio waves can pass through minor obstructions like trees and foliage with only minimal loss. However, they scatter heavily on large bodies of earth like hills and mountains. When the signal path is blocked by a hill, the transmission can only be heard if the waves are able to bounce around it. We tested the radios in a forest with rolling hills, first at two miles, then at four miles apart. Checking in just around two miles now, uh, pretty heavily forested here. You sound, you sound super good at this distance. Nice to hear from you. Justin, this is Alex on the mountain radio, checking in about two miles down the trail. Yeah, you sound, uh, you sound pretty good on the mountain radio too, but definitely a um, little lower quality. At this I continued down the trail and checked in again around four miles away. First with the GMRS radio. Right on the five watt here. Alex, you just you copy? Okay, yeah, I hear you loud and clear. I'm gonna swap over to the uh, mountain radio and see how that does. Do you copy? Justin, uh, a little more static on that transmission um, and a couple uh, breakups. As you can see, in those examples, both radios still worked but the radio waves were dampened by penetrating a lot of trees and scattering over some hills. The GMRS radio was able to maintain better audio quality throughout due to its higher power. For our final terrain type, let's look at major obstructions. In this example, we were in a river valley and got decent signal around one mile apart. Justin, this is Alex. Do you copy? Yeah, I do copy. Uh, I'm up here around the bend from Pole Creek off Highway 89. Okay, this is Alex on the mountain radio. A little more static uh, at the low end, uh, but I can hear everything. At two miles, we started losing connection on the FRS radio, and the GMRS radio was also struggling. The valley walls were completely obstructing the radio path, so the only way for my transmission to reach Justin is by bouncing along the walls of the valley. Each bounce the radio waves take weakens the signal. GMRS radios can bounce a bit further than FRS, but both radios had significantly reduced range in this environment. In our final example, we tested each radio on opposite sides of a large hill with no clear bounce path to the other side. Came about 0.8 miles around the hill here. Do you copy? And then on the GMRS radio. All right, Justin, this is Alex on the five watt radio. Five watt radio, do you copy? In this scenario, neither radio worked well, despite us being less than a mile apart. These types of major obstructions are the primary cause of losing signal in the backcountry. If you lose connection, one good tip is to hike a few minutes uphill. 
Gaining height can significantly improve your chance that your transmission will find a clear path between you and your partner. There are two more factors that can extend the range of a GMRS radio that are worth discussing. The FCC requires FRS radios to have a fixed antenna. However, GMRS radios are allowed to swap antennas. For example, you can use a larger vehicle mounted antenna to extend your range while driving. We tested this out a few times during the day, and we saw a good boost in audio quality and range while using the mobile antenna. Okay, Justin, how am I sounding now that you're on the mobile antenna? I just made it to the uh, pull-off. Do you copy? Alex, yeah, you sound, you sound great. GMRS radios are also permitted to use repeaters. Repeaters can transmit up to 50 watts of power. If you're struggling to get enough range on your property, installing a GMRS repeater atop a nearby hill can significantly extend your range. In summary, the extra power and capabilities of a 5-watt GMRS radio can make the difference in your ability to communicate in some scenarios. But extra power is not a silver bullet for range issues, and how much it helps will vary widely based on the terrain that you're in. For a visual example, let's take a look at some different situations in Yosemite Valley. The range of a 2-watt FRS radio will be shown in yellow, and the red area illustrates the extra range that a 5-watt GMRS radio may provide. When communicating to someone climbing the valley walls, your partner will be in line of sight most of the time, so the range of both radios will be great, and there isn't much difference between 2 watts and 5 watts of power. In major obstruction situations like transmitting over this ridgeline, both radios may lack a bounce path for the signal to travel, and the range of both radios will be dramatically reduced. The extra power doesn't help much in this situation. However, with minor obstructions, like this forest with rolling hills, the extra power of a GMRS radio has more of an impact on the range and audio quality. So which radio should you choose? The right radio for you will depend on your activities. For sports like multi-pitch climbing, FRS radios are a great fit since they're lightweight and the range is more than adequate to stay connected on the wall. In sports like hunting, you might find yourself much further apart from your partner with forests and hills between you. So a 5-watt GMRS radio could be the better choice. We hope that this video has helped you understand the range you can expect from FRS and GMRS radios. We believe that with proper understanding, backcountry radios can be a critical tool to use while on your adventures. Thanks for watching and see you out there.